Don't worry, it's all under control. The US Treasury acts to reassure investors after major falls in the US markets. Facebook in focus, how the social media firm is hoping to recover from a year of scandals over privacy and fake news. Hello there, very warm welcome to this edition of World Business Report. I'm Ben Bland. The U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin has made calls to the heads of the country's six largest banks. It is an unusual move that's aimed at reassuring investors after big falls in U.S. stocks. Last week, American stocks suffered one of the worst weekly falls in a decade as an interest rate rise and U.S.-China trade tensions rattled the markets. Samira Hussein joins us uh, live from New York. Uh, Samira, do we know then what was said in these calls and whether it had the desired effect? Well, we'll find out if it had the desired effect when markets open in about an hour's time from now. Uh, you know, if you look at international markets, you know, it sort of gives a bit of a mixed picture because, of course, it is Christmas. And so there are some major exchanges that are closed for the New York markets. They're going to be closing early today. Uh, in terms of what was said, look, it is really uncommon for the Treasury Secretary to make these comments public. Uh, it does happen that they do speak to to the heads of big banks. And what Mr. Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, was really looking for is that, look, we're seeing these big drops on financial markets. They wanted to make sure that there is a backstop. That is, there is some sort of cushion in the banks, that they have enough money to be able to shore up investments in case someone puts in a big order, for example. I mean, some of the factors um, that, that, that are unsettling investors have been around for some time. Global trade tensions, slowing economic growth. But it's quite extraordinary when the Treasury Secretary has to reassure the markets and investors and say, no, 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 don't worry, the president isn't planning on firing the, the, you know, the head of the Federal Reserve. Remember why markets are reacting the way they are. Remember where some of these issues are stemming from. So if you look at the economics, the fundamentals, look, economic growth is still doing well and the U.S. labor market is still doing well. So those are some of the fundamentals. But the other things that are happening, look, there is a partial government shutdown. There are, um, y you know, there are the, the comments made by Mr. Trump towards the Federal Reserve and of course, there are ongoing trade tensions. So much of that has, is, is coming more from the White House than it really is coming from the economic fundamentals. And I suppose, uh, as you say, we'll find out how uh, nerves are doing uh, when the US markets open. But um, as we've seen uh, so far today, uh, world stocks really uh, feeling the chill that comes from the US. Absolutely. But again, we have to remember that it is Christmas. And so, you know, volumes are going to be lower. Markets, some, mar some exchanges are going to be closing early or not opening at all. What is important to know that's going to happen today that will certainly also have an impact on markets is that the Treasury Secretary is also going to be talking to all the U.S. regulators. So the regulators for the stock markets, regulators for financial markets. Uh, and so I think we're going to be looking to see what he says and how markets react to those comments as well. Okay, Samir, thanks very much. Samir Hussein in New York. Let's run up some of the other main business news. And the car maker BMW has been fined $10 million in South Korea and faces a criminal investigation for allegedly trying to hide faulty parts. Investigators found defects in the cars that could cause coolant to leak and set fire to the engine. There have been nearly 40 cases of BMW engine fires in South Korea this year. The Royal Bank of Scotland has applied for a German banking licence to help it retain clients in the European Union in the event of a no-deal Brexit. RBS, which already has a Dutch licence, said the move would allow it to continue operating freely across the EU. A partial US government shutdown over budget spending could continue right up to the opening of the next Congress on the 3rd of January, according to a White House aide. The shutdown began at midnight on Friday after opposition Democrats resisted President Donald Trump's demand for $5 billion for his Mexico border wall. Mr Trump's acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, suggested the shutdown could stretch into the new year. Now, it's been a year in which we've all learned to worry about our personal data and what companies are doing with it. And that's largely due to the series of scandals 
that have hit Facebook. The social media giant has had to apologize for allowing its users' data to be abused by outside companies and for standing by as its platform is used to spread hatred. Here's our technology correspondent, Rory Keflin Jones. The social media empire, which connects two thirds of the world's internet users, started the year in confident mood, telling them it was going to send them more stuff from friends, less of that boring old news. Then Facebook hit the headlines itself. Mark Zuckerberg has admitted that Facebook made mistakes in mishandling data belonging to some 50 million of its users. When it emerged that a political consultancy, Cambridge Analytica, had harvested the data of millions of Facebook users, the social media firm faced a crisis of trust, which only worsened as the year went on. Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg broke his We asked technology pundits Stephanie Hare and Kate Bevan to look back at Facebook's year. It feels kind of exhausting to hear it again, actually, doesn't it? And then this wasn't the first one. There are just so many things this year. I know it's been an onslaught of data breaches and, and apologies that have come to just feel like nothing. Congressman, we try to collect and, and give people the ability to... I'd like to you to data. answer yes or no, if you could. Will you Mark Zuckerberg was soon donning a shirt and tie and facing a grilling of variable quality by politicians on Capitol Hill. Look, this is just theatre. Look how uncomfortable he looks. They're putting him on the spot and making him dance for their tune, aren't they? And I'm not sure he's saying anything particularly meaningful here. And it doesn't address the broader consequences. I don't think most people care if his data was taken or not. What they care about is whether or not the US election or the Brexit referendum was changed as a result of this data theft. The violence that forced the Rohingya to flee wasn't random, and it wasn't out of the blue either. Facebook was also accused of something worse than being careless about people's privacy. Its role in spreading hatred towards the Rohingya minority in Myanmar was highlighted by the United Nations. And in Europe and elsewhere, Facebook knows that regulation is moving up the agenda. Some sort of regulation is important and inevitable. And there'll be other challenges. The biggest threat to Facebook is that people stop trusting it. They stop going there, they stop looking at things, they stop sharing things, and that people move away from it. But in areas where it's growing, Africa and Asia, the biggest threat is going to be a repeat of what we've seen in Burma, e.g. things could take off in a way that leads to human rights violations or even further genocides. Facebook's motto used to be move fast and break things. Now the company and its founder know next year will be all about the slow business of rebuilding trust. Rory Catherine jones BBC News. Right, let's check in on how the markets are doing before we finish up. And I think we can uh, pull them up for you. Come this way. Come this way. Come on, I'll show you. Uh, Asian stocks mixed on Monday. Tokyo closed for a public holiday, uh, but Hong Kong uh, dropping almost 0.4% in a pre-Christmas half day of trading. On the bigger picture, world stocks set for their seventh straight day of losses as investors nervy about the possibility of that prolonged US government shutdown and a worsening global economy. Uh, people opting for the safety of bonds and gold, the safe havens. US stocks have fallen sharply in recent weeks on concerns over slowing economic growth. Uh, the S&P 500 on pace for its biggest percentage decline in December since the Great Depression. On that rather somber note, we'll end World Business Report. See you soon. Bye-bye.